It's 2022 and any mirrorless camera you buy is capable of producing pristine images. So pristine, so perfect. Too perfect? While an obsession with film, film look, vintage vibes, grain and grunge never truly left, the resurgence of these looks in the mainstream is no wonder. There's something beautiful about the imperfection. If you're into it and you want another piece of it to add to your toolkit, here's how to make a 35 millimeter vintage look lens for your Sony E-mount camera. This video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Join a community of over 32,000 photographers that includes equipment insurance, education, and business tools made specifically for small business owners like you. First, I'm gonna show you how to make the lens, and then I'm gonna show you what I've captured with it and how to get the best performance out of it. Here's a list of the supplies that you're gonna need. Screenshot this. So you can either buy a brand new post-2015 model Kodak FunSaver disposable camera, or if you give your local film developing shop a call, they just recycle the ones that they've already developed. So chances are they've got one laying around that they would just give to you for free. Amazingly, the lens fits perfectly through the hole a 5 8 drill bit makes like Kodak was trying to make this super easy for us. In my case, I had to buy an unused Kodak fun saver. So the first step for me is gonna be removing the film so that I can shoot it later in a 35 millimeter film camera. Put two pieces of tape over the lens so that you aren't exposing the film and then shoot the whole roll down to one. Now you gotta keep in mind, you gotta do everything that follows here at your own risk. Cause like, this is kind of dangerous. Open up the camera. There's some tabs all around the outside and be super careful because if you touch any metal, chances are you're gonna get tased, uh, which is actually what I did the first time I opened one of these up. So don't touch any metal. What you're after is this entire lens housing, and it's just held on by two tiny screws. Remove them, get your housing, and put the camera back together, and keep in mind that it likely still has a charge for the flash stored in its capacitor. So be super careful with it, and don't start a fire. All right, set the lens aside, grab your body cap, and do your best to find the very middle of it. I drilled a tap hole with a smaller bit, but you wouldn't necessarily have to do that. In order to cut this hole into the plastic without the bit tearing the body cap out of my hands, which happened a couple times, I ended up spinning the drill in reverse so that the bit sliced the plastic without digging into it, and that worked perfectly for me. Now grab that lens in your housing, take your snips and cut around the housing, but don't do it super tight to the lens. Leave some flat plastic around the edges that you'll be able to glue to. You only need to cut off enough to make it fit inside the outer plastic ring on the body cap. Very last step is glue the lens in place. Push on it for a couple minutes to make sure that the glue has time to dry. And then I also put some gaff tape on the outside of my body cap just for the aesthetic. Let me tell you why you might want to consider becoming a member of Professional Photographers of America. Four reasons. One, it's a low monthly price and you're gonna get a bunch of benefits. Two, equipment insurance. $15,000 worth of equipment insurance is included in the monthly price, and that's full replacement coverage with a deductible of $350, or you can get your equipment repaired for a flat deductible of 50 bucks. Number three, I've got some horror stories about data recovery or data recovery fails and like staying up all night crying about how to get these pictures back. Membership gives you access to professional data recovery services. And four, one of the most useful, we all need contracts, releases, location releases, model releases, whatever that looks like, all of the four forms and templates and things that you need to run a business as a photographer, access to all of them as a member of PPA. Take a look at the link in the description for a special discount off your membership. And whether you're just starting out or whether you've been at this for a really long time and you're looking to take your business to the next level, PPA is where you need to be. This idea came to me after making George Moore's 3D wiggle lens. I saw it sitting on the table next to a body cap and I just thought every body cap should be a lens. The version that you just made is actually V3 for me. The 
first two versions. One was made out of a bottle cap and the other one was made out of washers. And they produced some super weird, cool results that, that I was interested in for sure as well. But it hit me at some point that the flange distance and the aperture size of the actual house lens from the disposable camera was basically perfect if you just mounted it to the inside of a body cap. In my opinion, all body caps should just have this lens built into them because like, you know, you'll never miss a shot even if you have the body cap on. When it comes to shooting with it, the aperture is somewhere around F10 or F11 and the angle of view is right around 35 millimeters. Maybe it's more like 32 millimeters, something like that, but right around 35. As you might imagine, it's a little fuzzy at the edges of the frame. There's some vignetting, but like that's all kind of part of it. If you're taking a picture or video of a subject, having them somewhere between four feet away from the camera and 11 feet away from the camera is probably going to give you the best result in terms of focus, which makes sense because that's also what it says on the back of a Kodak Fun Saver disposable camera. The thing that I absolutely love about shooting with it is you don't have to worry about focus, you don't have to worry about aperture, you're really just able to adjust your shutter speed and your ISO. It just makes it simple and fun and like you could hand your camera to anybody with those settings on auto, they could grab a shot and it would have this vibe, this aesthetic. Am I gonna shoot this lens for clients? Probably not, but maybe, you know? You never know, maybe. Let me know if you make one. Love to see what you make with it. Again, check out Professional Photographers of America. Link's in the description. And uh, yeah, let's get out there and get this thing.